Hi! In this screencast, we'll learn how to use half transform functions like half lines and half circles to detect simple shapes on the images. Here we have a very simple application that reads and displays the images from a video file. The video was shot from a car, and as you can see, there's a couple of road signs there, as well as some road lanes. Suppose we want to find those objects in the video. One way to approach this is to use a so-called half transform to detect simple shapes like lines and circles in the image. First, we'll need to apply candy filter to the image to extract edges. For this, we convert the input image to grayscale and call candy function. We provide the input and output images and two threshold parameters. They will define how many edges will be left in the image. Ok, let's see what we actually get. As one could expect, we can see the road signs and the lanes, as well as the shapes of the cars and trees in the background. Now we'll call half lines function to detect lines on the image. In a nutshell, it will make a number of attempts to draw a line and see if enough white pixels lie on it. After this, it will return a vector of lines filled with successful attempts. First, we'll need a vector to store the resulting lines. Then we'll call the actual function. We provide the image with edges and output lines vector. Next to parameters, specify the resolution for internal variables of the algorithm. In most cases, you will simply want to set them to 1 and pi divided by 180. Next parameter specifies the minimum number of white pixels that should lie on the line. 25 is the minimum length of the segment and 2 is the length of the maximum allowed gap in a single line. After the function returns the vector of lines, we can draw it. Each line is represented by two endpoints and we can simply call CVLine to draw it. Ok, let's see what we've got. Not bad. The lines and curb stones are properly detected, but of course there's still a long way to go. A lot of lines are detected in the background and lanes often consist of several segments which probably need to be merged. However, the first step in the right direction was made and we'll leave it here for this demonstrational video. Now, to achieve similar results with the road signs, we'll use half circles function. It calls scanny function internally, so we need to provide it the grayscale image, not the binary image with edges. Then we provide the name of the method to use and several parameters of the algorithm. One is, again, simply a resolution of the internal accumulator variable, 10 is the minimum possible distance between the detected circles, 100 is a higher threshold that will be provided to the internal candy filter call, 25 is a threshold value, the lower it is, the more circles are detected. Lastly, the minimum and maximum possible ready are specified. Now we can draw the circles on the image. Each circle is represented by three values the coordinates of the center and its radius. So obviously, we can simply use cvcircle function for drawing. Now we can run the application. Whoa, that's quite some circles we have there. Such amount of false positives means that the parameters of the algorithm weren't set properly. To fix this, we could provide a higher threshold to the function or tweak other parameters. But actually, in case of half circles, it is often a good idea to perform Gaussian blur on the image. This way, all the weak edges will be smoothened and only the stronger ones will remain. Let's see if it will help. We call the blur function and provide gray image as both input and output parameters. Then we specify the kernel size of the filter and sigma values. Alright, now the circles are on the signs and the wheels of the car, which is much better than what we've had originally. Such qualitative transformations may seem almost magical, as well as the parameter values we use here may seem completely random and accidental. So a fair question would be, how do you actually come up with things like that in real life? Frankly, there's no good answer to that. You just try things out and tweak the parameters until the result is acceptable for your use case. 
After some time, you'll work out the intuition and the overall process will be somewhat easier. But until then, good luck with your experiments.